What's going on, spinning in Vegas? Okay, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, guys. I know here at the Spinning in Vegas household, we had a fantastic holiday season, guys, with family and friends, and uh, very enjoyable. And guys, with the new year, I thought it would be a perfect idea to uh, maybe give you guys a little bit of advice on uh, the best valued hotels in Las Vegas for 2019. Now, you guys know that I've done, you know, top hotels, worst hotel, blah, 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 hotel reviews on my channel, stuff like that, which is, which is great. But Vegas changes constantly, and stuff that I might have said in 2016 may not be so applicable uh, here in 2019. Vegas changes often. Hotels come and go. They get purchased by other companies who then renovate, change a lot of stuff. And that's the great thing about Vegas is it's constantly changing and it changes for you um, because as you adapt and, and or as your taste can differ over time uh, you might find yourself venturing to other properties such as myself on our last trip uh, we tried a lot of different properties and that just worked out for us and um, you know so they do it for you uh, they do it for market share you know the, these companies are trying to get the upper hand on the competition and I always said that competition is healthy. Competition means better prices for you, more value for your money, and uh, lots of other stuff. So when I say top five, uh, actually before I get into that, I just wanna say guys, if you're new to the channel, to subscribe and uh, you know hit the like button on this video. Um, in addition to me talking here, you're gonna see lots of pictures and video floating by as I talk about these properties. So it's not just gonna be POV, uh, on me here. You're going to see pictures and videos um, of what I'm talking about in the background. Not for everything, but for a lot of stuff. So it's not just going to be all me. So yeah, guys, what do I mean by best valued hotels? Do I mean the cheapest? No. Uh, do I mean the best? No. The most expensive? No. Best value means what you're going to get for your money. So how much are you spending? What are you getting in comparison uh, to what you're spending. That's what I mean by the best value. Um, a bad example of, of, of value would be you're spending $200 a night and the rooms are terrible. There's a high resort fee. There's no entertainment. There's no pool, small casino, you know, stuff like that's bad value. So we're looking at best value hotels uh, in Las Vegas for 2019. Now, guys, I want to say I did at least seven days of hard research, phone calls, uh, email exchanges with people contacts that I have in Las Vegas, uh, you know, uh, floating on different websites that I'm a member of and forums that I frequent, I was able to compile top five best hotels in Las Vegas. And I do believe I have three honorable mentions as well. Uh, I'm gonna go into detail on the top five, but the honorable mentions, I will not. Yes, I do have three honorable mentions. And uh, I guess we'll just cut right to the chase, guys, and get to it. Number five, the Flamingo in Las Vegas. Now guys, the Flamingo, I've seen deals. Rarely you'll see a room come up for $19.99. You gotta be quite lucky with these guys. You'll see these $19.99 rates on lasvegas.com, sometimes uh, other websites, and even the Flamingo website itself uh, will offer that from time to time. You gotta be very lucky. Uh, and when I say that it's rare that they'll come up with $19.99, I mean rare, you might, you might be talking about a week out of a year. However, $29.99 is common. So $30 a night to stay at the Flamingo, guys. Now, keep in mind, for all of these properties, you're going to have resort fees uh, between $30 and $40 per night. Some of these resort fees uh, can be uh, mitigated, if not eliminated, uh, altogether uh, with a few tips and tricks that I can tell you about uh, as we go in the episode. Um, also, you have to sometimes deposit, so you have to keep an eye on which property, sometimes they will require a deposit. However, you will get that deposit back, so there's no money out of your pocket. However, it is an up cut, upfront cost that you might wanna budget into your stay. But what we're really looking at is nightly rate here. So $29.99 per night at the Flamingo. Like I said, you might be able to get one for $19.99. We had the option to stay there at $19.99 uh, per night. We did not take advantage, but we did see it. So $29.99, what do you get for your $29.99 per night? Well, guys, the Flamingo just went through an extensive, extensive, multi, multi-million dollar renovation of its rooms. Uh, like I said, you will see 
pictures here floating by. They did a wonderful job at capturing the flamingo essence into their room. They incorporated that, that theme into their rooms and it looks absolutely fantastic. I would absolutely love to stay in one of these rooms, guys. They look just gorgeous. They did a great job there in comparison to what they used to look like. Um, in addition to the renovations in the rooms, uh, you're in the heart of the strip. The Flamingo is right there, dead center. If you don't want to stick around the property, you can just walk to wherever the hell you want to go, guys. It's a great, fantastic location there. It's also rich in history. I mean, here is the original OG casino, the Flamingo, built by Bugsy Siegel uh, for the mob. And, and you get that feel when you're in there. Uh, when I walked through the Flamingo, I just, I had that feeling of, wow, it's almost like it's like a, like a haunting feeling. And I know it's all in the head, but that's just part of the history, right? Um, so really good there in the history. It's also part of Caesars, which is a good thing because like M Life, uh, when you have like your Caesars card, Caesars Entertainment, you can use that card at Flamingo, just like you can bring it over to Caesars, put that same card in a machine over there. You'll rack up points at different properties, which is really, really good uh, for the comp system. So bringing us back to those resort fees, if you're going to play in the slot machines, chances are your resort fee is gonna be comp. They're just gonna take it off. You don't have to pay for it. So um, it's really good that they have that, you know, that Caesars Entertainment card there uh, able to be used at the Flamingo. It's linked to the Las Vegas monorail. Now, this is something that a lot of people overlook because Las Vegas is not a straight line. And when you're looking at Google Maps or Google Earth, you look at it and you'll be like, oh, it's not that big. It doesn't look that far to get from here to there. Don't underestimate it. Just don't. I thought the same thing before I went to Vegas. I'm like, this is easily doable. Uh, no, it's not easily doable. The monorail is going to allow you to travel from property to property absolutely free. And it takes all that stress off your legs, off your feet, because let me tell you guys, you're going to do a lot of walking in Vegas if you don't, you know, Uber, Lyft, taxi, uh, shuttles, uh, the bus system, the monorail, the trams. There's, there's all sorts of different transportation that's offered to you, but the monorail is fantastic. It takes you damn near everywhere on the Strip, and it's absolutely free. You might have to wait a little bit, but hey, you're going to wait anyway because you're walking to these other locations. It's going to take some time because like I said, Vegas is not a straight line. You have to go up and down stairs. A lot of times the escalators on the strip don't work. So you're just walking upstairs, walking downstairs, going across pedways, going across bridges. It's never a straight line. If you're budgeting an hour to get from one property to another, add an extra 30 minutes because you're, it's just the way it is. You have to budget more time than what you think. Um, the Flamingo has at least eight restaurants on site, guys, uh, including the renowned uh, Center Cut Steakhouse. We've had people come on the channel and just absolutely recommend the Center Cut Steakhouse, guys. Uh, we haven't eaten there before, but like I said, I've done a lot of research. I've talked to a lot of people, including many of you who watch the channel here, subscribers on the channel. And Center Cut uh, Steakhouse seems to be just an absolute winner there. Uh, some of their shows are lacking, but they do have some good entertainment there, including Donnie and Marie, which has uh, great reviews. Uh, Piff the Magic Dragon, again, really great reviews on that show. They have X Burlesque and X Burlesque University. These are more adult themed types of shows. So it's actually not that bad on the entertainment. There are properties with better entertainment. However, you're paying $29.99 a night, and this is available to you on site at the Flamingo. That means you do not have to walk outside of the property to enjoy some great entertainment. Um, nightlife includes, well, Bugsy's Bar. That's just fantastic. I've been to Bugsy's Bar. Uh, I've had ordered drinks from Bugsy's Bar. And it, it really, it, they just, they hit on that rich history that I was talking about earlier with Bugsy Siegel, whom the bar is named after. Uh, they have the Garden Bar, the Electric Safari, the Bird Bar. They also have uh, the Beach Club Pool and the uh, Goal Pool Day Club. So they have great pools there and uh, lots of nightlife bars and stuff like that. They have the wildlife habitat there, uh, the flamingo habitat, which is free to go in. You don't have to pay any money to go in there. And it's a great little uh, area uh, presentation where there is live flamingos there. They have nice little uh, ponds there full of koi fish. And it's just like a tropical theme. It's very, very well done, guys. And again, um, they they trying to hold on to that rich history uh, that they are so famous for. Uh, with the Flamingo. Uh, they have on-site shopping at the Flamingo too. Uh, it's the promenade shopping. 
not going to be the greatest uh, mall there at Flamingo. However, like I said, when you couple it with $29.99 a night, uh, you can go down there, find yourself some shops to shop in. Um, I will say that shopping on site properties can be quite expensive no matter where you are in the strip. It's always a better idea to do your shopping in the outlet malls uh, and souvenir shops that are not on the strip. You'll just save yourself some money overall. Uh, there's also a spa and salon uh, at the Flamingo as well, guys. So as you can see, they accommodate pretty well everybody. There's great, there's good entertainment. Uh, there's great restaurants. Anything you need uh, is going to be there and all for $29.99 a night. So that's why Flamingo came in at number five. And I would highly recommend you at least trying the Flamingo. I mean, at $29.99 a night, you can't go wrong. You know, if you spend just one night, if it doesn't work out, there's lots of other uh, properties for you to test out, uh, which could be right next to you because again, Flamingo's right in the heart of the strip. Number four, Westgate. Now, this used to be the Hilton. Uh, now the Westgate and guys, again, I've seen rooms go for as low as 25, well, it's not uncommon to find them at $25 a night. It's not as rare as the $19.99 as, you know, that Flamingo can promo at times. It's more common to find the Westgate at $25 a night. And I mean, at 25 bucks a night, in my opinion, takes out any risk. Now, when I try a hotel, because I travel often, uh, you know, just myself with work and my business and stuff, but whenever I travel with the family, we are a mid to high end shopper. We like to look in the hotel ranges of two to four hundred dollars a night. And guys, let me tell you, we've spent three hundred dollars a night on hotels that were absolute garbage. So, but it was a high risk. We spent a lot of money, took a risk, and learned the hard way. I don't see much of a risk in twenty five dollars a night, or even the twenty nine ninety nine a night that the Flamingo can be found at. Um, at twenty five dollars a night, it's very low risk. Again, with the Westgate. Newly renovated rooms. These guys have been renovating their rooms over the last uh, year or so, a couple years actually, and you know they look fantastic. They they can also offer great views of the strip. Uh, it's a little bit off the strip, and people tend to forget about these little properties that are off the strip, but not by far. They offer great views. They offer you know a beautiful suites and, and, and regular resort rooms, and uh, as you can see there from the pictures. This property is also linked to that monorail that I was talking about uh, with the Flamingo, even though it's off strip. So again, even though it's off strip, it's not like you have to walk any further to get there. Take the monorail, get your ass to the strip or wherever the heck you want to go and take the weight off your feet, your legs and stuff like that and save a few bucks because you're not using Uber, you're not using Lyft, you're not taking any taxis, you're saving money by staying at this property. Not you know That's on top of the cheap cost of $25 per night. Um, they have a pool there with cabanas and stuff like that. Not the greatest pool there at Westgate, but there is a pool for you to take advantage of with the cabanas if you just want to relax poolside and stuff like that. Um, one good thing that we've, we've heard about with this property is the resort fees. We've heard many stories from people, even first time visitors, who would go there and get their resort fees comped after playing only double that amount in the slot machine. So let's say the the resort fee is $30 a night. If they played 60 in a slot machine, they would comp the $30 resort fee. That's fantastic. That's a great promotion. I can't verify this. I really can't. I did not ever stay at the Westgate. But there's so many people talking about having like Facebook groups, uh, Twitter, uh, Las Vegas forums uh, on the internet. Uh, a lot of other people that here come on, coming on the channel are saying, you know, I spent $100 in the casino and they caught my three night resort fees. And I'm like, oh my God, that's nuts. Uh, so yeah, I've heard stories of that. So, you know, even though I can't verify it, uh, I'm gonna say that I believe it at this point because so many people are talking about it and these people are uh, completely unconnected sources. So uh, if you can get those resort fee comped and only pay that 25 bucks, man, that's a real treat. Um, 10 dining establishments on site there at Westgate, including Benihana, which is a Japanese steakhouse, guys. And again, so many people recommended this. I remember the first time I went to Vegas, I had one user on the channel uh, who would not stop letting me know about this restaurant, Benihana. And I never went. <laughs> I never went to Benihana. Again, because it's off the strip. First time going there. Like, you know, you don't get used to Vegas until you're there for quite a few times. And uh, you just, you want to experience so much more first, but this is going to be on my list on my next trip. 
absolutely 100% guaranteed I'm going. The great reviews uh, there. But again, there's nine other dining establishments there as well, uh, which all have great reviews, by the way. Uh, for an off-strip property, it's not a huge property, their shows are not that bad. They have George Wallace there who performs at uh, Westgate. Even ba Barry Manilow has a running show there at Westgate. Uh, Soul of Motown, which has great reviews. You can get cheap tickets uh, for Soul of Motown at Ticks for Tonight booths that you find throughout the strip. Uh, just keep walking on the strip, guys. You will eventually run into a Ticks for Tonight booth. Soul of Motown is usually featured uh, at, you know, for cheap tickets at that location. Uh, they also have a show there, uh, magician Jen Kramer, who is a comedy magician uh, with great reviews. And they have Sexy, which is a adult topless show. So for all you guys out there who enjoy that sort of stuff, and ladies who may enjoy that, some of that stuff, uh, it has absolutely terrific reviews. Uh, so, you know, not bad entertainment there for a, a property like Westgate off the strip. Very, very attractive. Uh, over 17, I think they have 17 shops on site. Again, not going to be the most elegant of malls and not the most affordable. Most on-site uh, stores are quite expensive. Uh, just to put in comparison, a two-liter bottle of soda at the Cosmopolitan was $12. Uh, if you were to go to a convenience store, let's say downtown, you know, $2. <laughs> so there's a $10 difference there, right? It's just absolutely inflated uh, anywhere on the strip on properties, uh, shops that are on the properties. Uh, and they have Serenity Spa there. They have Salon at the Westgate. So you're getting, again, a full spectrum of amenities, uh, entertainment, restaurants, on-site, all for $25 per night. Uh, as for the casino, I never really touched on the casino at the Flamingo and Westgate. Flamingo, nice casino, a little bit smoky, not big and grand like the bigger properties on the Strip. And the same goes for Westgate. Uh, again, a smaller casino, uh, a little bit older, smoky, uh, could use some renos, but... Again, for what you're paying for your nightly fee, if you don't like the casino, take that monorail over to somewhere else and use it there. Uh, use the casino there. 25 bucks a night, can't go wrong. All right, so number three, guys. This one is Treasure Island. I don't know what the heck happened with Treasure Island over the last, because, you know, I, again, I look at trends. Uh, Treasure Island was a $200 a night property, $150 a night, $170 a night, plus resort fee, taxes and stuff like that. Uh, now we're seeing Treasure Island drop to $50 a night. You can find them. Uh, actually, I looked here yesterday and I was able to find a room for $50 a night. Uh, again, these are base rooms, but the base rooms are fantastic. You know, they look great. Um, Treasure Island does have some renovated view, uh, rooms there with great views of the Strip. Uh, you are in the northern part of the Strip and you might just get a room that looks towards, like you're looking south and you see great views of the Strip there. Uh, Treasure Island is actually Steve Wynn's brainchild. He was the one who built uh, Treasure Island, and we all know how Steve Wynn does his properties. He just does them very big and grand, and it is dated now. It's an older property, but like I said, they have updated and renovated. Uh, there's at least a dozen restaurants on the site, including uh, Phil's Italian Steakhouse. We ate there at Phil's Italian Steakhouse on our second trip, and it was fantastic, guys. I can highly recommend it from personal uh, experience, but... The people that recommend Phil's Italian Steakhouse uh, is right up there. They have great shows at Treasure Island, including uh, Mister by Cirque du Soleil, one of the highest rated shows uh, in Vegas. They have the Marvel's Avengers station there. So if you bring kids or a lot of adults actually like uh, Avengers and Marvel and all that stuff as well. Uh, they have Gilly Saloon uh, and they also frequent big name talent. So a lot of well-known artists perform at Treasure Island as well there at their event center and uh, you can find shows there quite frequently so there's no shortage of entertainment. Um, there's over a dozen shops there at Treasure Island but that really isn't their market and I'll tell you why. There's a bridge that connects Treasure Island to fashion show malls and the Grand Canal shops right across the road over at Venetian and Palazzo. Um, they have a pool and cabana there as well at Treasure Island and spa and salon and guys fifty dollars per night are you kidding me wow for it's not often that you see a mega resort being offered at fifty dollars a night even properties like bellagio mirage you know two three four five hundred dollars a night sometimes for base rooms 50 bucks wow you 
that's usually the price of a downtown um, casino, hotel. Number two, the Palms Casino. Guys, this is a high-end hotel casino. I believe this was built in 1999, maybe year 2000-ish, right around there. It is off the strip slightly, quite a walk off the strip. There is no connecting monorail or tram that takes you uh, from Palms to the strip. Uh, however, Uber would cost you $5. Uh, you can walk it. It would be uh, quite a walk, even though it is a straight walk. There's no zigzagging or up and down stairs and escalators. Um, but at $60 a night for a high-end hotel like the Palms Casino, guys, I... I said that on our next trip, we're going to spend a night or two at Palms. That still holds true, uh, especially given that we're finding prices like this. But we were looking at Palms Casino last year, uh, right around, mm, geez, it would have been around October, no, May, sorry. It would have been May of last year when we were looking at prices and we were entertaining the Palms at 125 a night. This is less than half that price. and. You're, again, you're looking at a high-end hotel with frequent renovations and upgrades almost constantly. Every year they are renovating their rooms. This is, uh, they're actually famous for it actually, for, for the constant and frequent upgrades and renovations. Uh, the views of the Strip are going to be the best. Not the best, how do, I, how do I word this? You're not on the Strip, it's the best view of the Strip off the strip. Does that make sense to you? Because you're right behind the strip, you're getting a complete view of the strip, providing you're getting a room that is facing south. And um, that view, oh my gosh, like you go look at videos on the internet, you look at pictures on the internet. If you ask for a south facing room, um, they might be slightly a little bit more. The prices that we have here at 60 did include a south facing room uh, based on my phone call to the Palms Casino. Uh, 10 eating establishments on site, including Scotch 80 Prime. Now, uh, I know two of you guys on my channel had, had recommended this. Um, I never really put much thought into it, put much thought into the recommendations from, from those guys because I'm not really a, a, a big drinker. Uh, in addition to Scotch 80 Prime being a fantastic restaurant, they offer world-class whiskeys. So... If you're a big fan of Scotch whiskeys and stuff like that, this might be a great place for you. But it's known for its fine, fine dining, guys. A superb restaurant. If that's not your thing, like I said, there's nine other establishments there on site for you uh, to enjoy. Uh, the Palms is also known for some of the best nightlife in Las Vegas, guys. They have the Apex Social Club, which has a new location, guys. So I believe you are 35, 40 floors up. And it's facing south, it's outdoor, and you see the entire strip. It's one of the most active nightclubs, uh, social clubs in Las Vegas, guys. They have a, uh, the Palms Place pool there uh, at the P uh, Palms. They have the Spawn Saloon, so that's all taken care of there in terms of amenities. Um, they do have uh, the Pearl Theater there, which hosts some big-name concerts, big-name events. Uh, Billy Idol and Styx are featured here. Uh, at the uh, the Pearl Theater at Palms in the coming weeks and months. Uh, so they do have big name entertainment. Hopefully you can get lucky and, uh, you know, at the time of your stay, hopefully there's somebody there playing that you can enjoy. The casino itself, it has a reputation for being one of the loosest casinos, not just like I don't want to say on the strip, it's not on the strip, but it's pretty close, but in all of Vegas. So guys, having said all that, it's $60 per night uh, with the high-end hotel, um, but even their base regular rooms, guys, are just fantastic, offer some of the greatest views in all of Las Vegas. If you want a view of the strip, off the strip, this is your prime location, guys. Palms Casino, number two. I can't wait to stay there, guys. I am getting super stoked for our next trip to Vegas, and uh, the Palms is gonna be a very big part of that next visit. Number one, Mandalay Bay, $65. Mandalay Bay is one of the most high-end properties in all of Vegas. At 65 bucks a night, come on guys. Our first trip to Vegas, we looked at staying at Mandalay Bay and it was $500 a night. 
we understand why it was that high because we had no established relationship with any slot host. Uh, we didn't have anything built up on an M Life card, so we were getting base, you know, prices for the time that we were going. Uh, you know, there's going to be times in Vegas like, you know, their winter months are the cheapest times to play and stay in Vegas. And I'm sure that if you go to Mandalay Bay during those times, it's going to be cheaper than the $500 we were quoted. Um, but at $65 a night, how can you compare? Well, well, we'll tip for example the D at. $115 a night or Mandalay Bay at 65. Wow. Now it's a tropical themed hotel. It's on the Southern part of the strip. So it has that going against it. Um, the Southern part of the strip is far from everything else. If you want to go to Bellagio or Cosmopolitan or uh, Mirage, Venetian, Flamingo from Mandalay Bay, you definitely have to, you can't walk it. You can, it's going to take you over an hour and your, your legs are going to be busted. Your feet are going to be, and if you're planning, a, you know, three, four or five days a week, two weeks in Vegas, whatever, you're going to be spent. And if you're only spending a day or two in Vegas, why waste your time walking that much? And you could be doing other things. So that goes against it. They do have, well, we'll talk about them in a minute, but uh, location kind of sucks. Uh, it's one of the nicest looking hotels. I mean, gold plated windows. I mean, when you're driving on the strip and you just see the Mandalay Bay, you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, after the tragic incident uh, in October of 2017 uh, with the, the shooting there uh, at Mandalay Bay, uh, just a tragic incident, guys. And I still think about it very often to this day. Uh, you know, I had friends on the channel who were in Vegas at that time, and, and the whole city was just a stir. And, uh, you know, my heart still goes out to the victims and, 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 and the families of the victims. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know. Uh, but since that sick tragedy, the prices have come down. And, and I, 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 I'm not trying to say take advantage of, of that. Uh, what I'm saying is that the hotel is trying to gain confidence back because the hotel did make mistakes in this whole thing. And, you know, they're trying to, 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 to earn that trust, to regain the confidence of the people who once loved that hotel and frequent in that hotel. Uh, because I read so much, uh, on my channel and other pages, uh, of how people said they'll never go back. And, and I, I think that sucks. Um, the market share, like the, the stock prices since then have, you know, went down and it hurts the company overall and they have to make up that loss in other ways. Resort fees, tighter slots, uh, parking fees, more expensive. It, it, it hurts everybody in the end when people stop going to these places. But from the look of it, Mandalay Bay is taking some measures, and I think all of Vegas is taking some measures to bring back people because less people are visiting Vegas every year. Um, and Mandalay Bay seems to be one of them properties that's saying, okay, hey, we recognize there's a problem. We have to try and figure out a solution to try and get not just the people we lost, but new people to Vegas and, 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 and you know people returning. $65 a night is one of those ways to get people back. And guys, their rooms are dreamy. They are beautiful rooms, guys. Um, again, renovating on and off, you know, uh, keeping the, the, the property updated. And it is a beautiful property. We've been to Mandalay Bay. It is just, oh, one word comes to mind, pearl. I, I don't know why. I, like the floors and stuff, it's very pearl. Uh, very bright, very elegant. It just it makes you feel like a millionaire to walk through that place. And it's all about luxury when it comes to Mandalay Bay. They have over 3,200 rooms at that property. That just gives you a, a, an idea of scale. It doesn't have the monorail, but it is hooked to a tram system. And this tram system is good for taking you to a little bit northern part of the, part of the strip. So... If I'm not mistaken, that tram goes from Mandalay Bay and then takes you up to Excalibur. Uh, yeah, it goes, yeah, Mandalay Bay, Luxor, and then Excalibur, and pretty much Tropicana too, because there's a bridge there that takes you from Excalibur to Tropicana. So that tram goes up three properties. 
So once you're at Excalibur, you could take a bridge, walk over that bridge, go to New York, New York, or you could take a bridge to the right, go over to Tropicana, or you can go to New York and then take another bridge to go to MGM Grand. So I'm going to go ahead and say, even though arguably technically it's not, that you can go from Mandalay Bay all the way to MGM Grand in a matter of minutes. And that's a big help seeing that it is on the southern part of the strip and suffers from that, that southern location. Um, and we've used that tram. We've used the tram to go from Mandalay Bay to Excalibur uh, previously. And let me tell you, walking from Mandalay Bay to Excalibur or even MGM Graham for that fact is taxing. It doesn't look like much on Google Maps or Google Earth, but it really is taxing. So, uh, you know, that tram system absolutely helps. Um, beautiful casino. Beautiful casino. All of the, uh, the, the casinos in Vegas are going to be smoky because they allow smoking in them. Uh, so you really can't take too many points away for that. But it's a beautiful grand casino, guys. Very elegant. Um, we've played at that casino. Fantastic. It's part of the M-Life Rewards Program, which is probably one of the best systems, if not the best system, in Vegas. So you have an M-Life card that can be used at any M-Life property. You know, properties like Mandalay Bay, Luxor, uh, MGM Grand, New York, New York, Bellagio, Mirage, Aria. You can use that one card, play at all of those properties, and gain points on that same card and use them at any one of the properties. So it's a fantastic system there, guys, and a lot of people take advantage of the M-Life Reward Program. Mandalay Bay has one of the best, well, not one of the best, the absolute best pools in Las Vegas. They have a huge wave pool, uh, which is the only one of its kind in Las Vegas in terms of, you know, uh, casinos and, and, and hotels. Uh, there is a wave pool at the water parks in Las Vegas, but in terms of a casino hotel, this, <laughs> they're the only ones that have it. But yes, they do have the best pools in all of Las Vegas and it, they're tropical themed. So it's fantastic, great atmosphere. In the summer months, though, it's going to be packed. Really, really packed. Don't bank on getting a cabana unless you plan on spending $1,000 for a cabana. It's crazy. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to go into the pool area, make sure that you are blocked, protected from the sun, and you limit your time there. Uh, but I would absolutely recommend taking advantage of those pools, guys. If you're going to Mandalay Bay and not going in the pool, uh, you're doing it wrong. Um they have great shows there, including uh, Michael Jackson 1 by Cirque du Soleil, which just has fantastic raving reviews, guys. A lot of people enjoy that Michael Jackson 1 show. Um, they have the House of Blues there. The Shark Reef Aquarium, which is great, especially if you have kids. But even if you don't have kids, it's a wonderful spot. We indeed visited the Shark Reef Aquarium, guys. The lineup was a mile long. I think we waited in line for... I want to say 45 minutes to an hour uh, in that waiting line there. Uh, but it was worth every minute of the wait. In addition to like the actual reef itself, there's just a beautiful display of all different types of species there. And they do it really well. Again, they keep with that tropical theme and uh, a, 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 just a, a beautiful display there and exhibit at the Mandalay Bay Shark Reef Aquarium. It's a must if you're in Vegas. Even if you're not staying at Mandalay Bay, I would highly recommend going to that Shark Reef Aquarium. They have concerts on the beach there. They have Nashville Unplugged. And again, a huge event center there with absolutely big name entertainment that comes. Uh, so you're not going to have any shortage there of shows at Mandalay Bay. Um, again, they're going to suffer from the location. If you want to see a show that's in the middle of the strip, uh, you're talking about taking the tram up to New York, New York, uh, that area of the Strip, and hopping on a monorail and going to wherever you want uh, to save yourself some money. Um, they have some of the best dining in all of Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay, guys. Uh, they have 32 dining establishments on site. You heard that right. 32 restaurants. This is crazy. Um, out of those 32, one of them is uh, something called... Uh, Oriole. Oriole is one of the most famous restaurants in all of Las Vegas, guys. It is home to the world-class wine tower. 
uh, with the wine angels there. It's just this huge wine tower. It's a glass see-through wine tower and the wine angels, they call them, are hooked to cables and they kind of fly up, get your wine, and they're known for the best wines in all of Las Vegas, guys. Whether you want a $5 glass or a $5,000 glass of wine, they're going to have it there at Oriel. In addition to the wine, like I said, some world-class dining there. And if that's not your thing, you have 31 other establishments to choose from for your dining needs. So if you're going hungry at the Mandalay Bay, uh, there's, there's something wrong, okay? Uh, nightlife and clubs, there's over 10 establishments. Again, just giving you a scale of how grand things are. When you have 10 clubs and nightlife establishments, you know the place is huge. And one of them is home to Light Nightclub, which is one of the more famous nightclubs in all of Las Vegas. Again, uh, so if you're one of them night crawlers who goes to Vegas, you sleep all day up all night, Mandalay Bay is going to be a really hot choice for you uh, as well. Uh, 26 on-site shops there at Mandalay Bay. We've passed through these shops. And, uh, you know, 26 is, is quite a bit. You know, that's, that's a lot of shopping to do. Again, I don't really recommend shopping on on-site uh, stores because they're just inflated in price. But being that you're so far south on the Strip, you might not ha have very many options. Um, like I said, you want to take that tram to, a, you know, a more northern point and then jump on a monorail and get to a place where it's they're not going to eat you alive, man, with those costs. And there's really not a lot uh, you can do when you're, you know, at a place so south on the Strip. Maybe take uh, a Uber down to the South Outlet Mall, uh, which is, you know, quite further south. But... It might be worth it because the money you'll save in the long run, uh, it, should, it just makes it more feasible for you. So all of that, guys, Mandalay Bay at $65 per night. How can you say no? It's one of the grandest properties in all of Vegas at a downtown price. I mean, you can't go wrong. So I am looking forward to having a stay at Mandalay Bay in a future trip. And uh, they do take a well-deserved number one spot on the top five best valued hotels in Las Vegas for 2019. Now I'll get into some honorable mentions here. I'm not going to go into detail. You have the Stratosphere, <laughs> opposite of Mandalay Bay. You're so far north that you really don't, and there's no rails that go up there. Uh, or maybe there is, I'm not sure. I haven't really researched that part there, but you are really far north there. Newly renovated rooms again, guys, $29 per night, uh, which can have some good, good, good views. And they have thrill rides right there uh, on the top of the stratosphere, drop tower. Uh, they have a swinger that takes you over the side. They have the bungee cable ride. It's pretty cool. And at $29 a night, it's not so bad. But when you compare the $29 to, let's say, something like Westgate at $25 or $29 at Flamingo in the heart of the Strip, you can see why it's an honorable mention. Uh, Park MGM, newly renovated. Uh, they're trying to rebuild a customer base. A lot of people were forgetting about them. Uh, when they were called the Monte Carlo. Um, they have done some renovations. However, there's still a lot of renovations left to go. And from what we are hearing at current time, there's still quite a bit of noise on the property. Uh, they are offering nights at $60 a night. In my opinion, they have to offer a little bit more uh, because when you compare $60 a night to stay at Park MGM compared to the 65 for Mandalay Bay, I'm going to suggest Mandalay Bay all day long. But it is an honorable mention there, guys. Some of the rooms are gorgeous from the pictures we've seen. And uh, at 60 bucks per night to stay, especially at their location, which is pretty well south middle strip. Uh, still a great location. Uh, and another honorable ben mention, guys, is Bally's. Um, not known for you know uh, extensive renovations, uh, but we found rooms at $19.99 per night, and this is pretty common. Uh, you sh you're probably not going to have to work too hard to get a room for $19.99 a night. Bally's is the former MGM Grand. Uh, one thing when we tried to do research on Bally's was we found, and I, I'm not saying I believe in this, um, but supposedly the hotel's haunted. Uh, a lot of people, unconnected sources, again, uh, claiming certain rooms are haunted or they had these experiences on, on, on the property. Again, there was a tragic event that happened at the former MGM Grand, which is now Bally's, a fire that had happened in the hotel, and many people lost their lives. Uh, again, hearts go to the victims and, and, and their families. Um, 
but since then a lot of people have reported some paranormal activity so if you're the type of person that likes to get spooked or you're thrilled by that sort of thing uh at 20 dollars a night i can't see it uh, being too much of a risk uh, again a little bit off strip but in a location where if you don't like the room you're not far from something else uh so that's why i got an honorable mention based on that price of 19.99 guys uh, and the casino is not that bad either and the rooms didn't look too bad as well from the pictures uh, that i've seen on the internet again which you'll see here floating by uh, in the background um, and that's it guys top five best value hotels in las vegas for 2019 uh, i'm looking forward to uh, having a better 2019 and getting back to vegas 2018 for me was a rough one guys uh, just with my health you know my ears and my eyes uh, failing me like they are and uh I'm just hoping that 2019 is a better year, and it's not just with my health. Uh, you know, my mother-in-law having uh, heart surgery was tough. My niece, you know, she's she's not even three years old, and she has brain cancer. I mean, it, it's just been a sucky year, and um, I trade everything I have if everybody could just be healthy. We take our health for granted, and, and I'm hoping that 2019 uh, could be. A better year in terms of health and because uh, without your health it's hard to enjoy um, a lot of stuff in life and um, you know just looking forward to 2019 can't wait to get back to Vegas guys because some of these hotels that I mentioned here are on our itinerary and I want to see what all the fuss is about guys and uh, looking you know just getting back putting more material up because I am running out of material for the page I have a lot of live plays and stuff like that to to put up and uh, but it's hard for my heart to be in this channel when my health has been so bad and I'm just focusing on trying to get better and trying to get my life back in order. And with the basement rentals that happened here last year as well, it just uh, everything was just going downhill. It was really bad for us. And, um, you know, uh, but we, you know, we're trying to stay positive best we can and uh, make sure that uh, we're going to do our best to, to, in 2019 to stay happy and healthy and and, uh, and whatnot and like I said I know that there's a lack of material up on the page um, it's not like I said because I want I'm just looking for more ideas and uh, I got another episode that I'm going to be editing as well Las Vegas Journeys I got live plays that need to go up uh, I'm also doing an episode that's going to be uh, some of my best moments in Las Vegas uh, because you know 50 episodes coming up and uh, I want to kind of reflect and look back on my favorite moments uh, in Las Vegas and you know just relive them again it's going to be a really nice episode I'm going to try and make it at least two hours long and offer some new lot, uh, slot live plays in that episode as well uh, including some very nice wins and uh, you know there is stuff to look forward to on the channel I just got to get my head right here and, and you know get my ass in gear and do it but I, I'm trying to uh, balance a whole lot of stuff here at the same time and uh, but I'll make sure it happens guys and when I do come back you know full throttle with this channel you guys are not going to know what hit you there's going to be a lot of videos that are going to be posted up at once and uh, it's just going to be real fun and I'm looking forward to it just be patient with me a lot of people writing and uh, you know asking how I'm doing I read all your comments even though I don't respond to all of them all I can say at this point is I can't wait to come back full throttle. I think I mentioned it in my last episode of the new uh, system I just bought, computing system uh, from CLX Gaming. It's actually a gaming computer, but I didn't buy it for gaming capability. I bought it for editing and multimedia. So you're talking uh, an i9 processor there, uh, RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition card in their video card, 64 gigs of RAM. Like it, It's just... It's a $6,000 PC, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of technology that I'm going to be able to uh, easily edit on and uh, it's going to make my life easier in the end, you know, lesser render times, more capabilities in my editing and, and just a lot of different stuff that I can do. I'm just waiting for things to kind of cool off here in, 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 in personal life with the health issues I have. So I'm going to end the video here again. Sorry for the long winded uh, rant here at the end. Not really a rant, but uh you know, always seem like I'm explaining myself uh, because I know that my efforts have not been the greatest as of late on the channel. And I just feel like you guys actually do, uh, you know, I owe you an apology and I owe you an ex explanation. And uh, I just know that I haven't given up on you guys. I think about you guys all the time. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have some episodes that I'll be editing uh, in the coming future. 
uh, along with um, some new material as well. And just know that I'm looking forward to it just as much as you guys are. So take care out there, guys. I hope one of you guys are able to visit one of these uh, hotels in 2019, given uh, all this information that I was able to uh, discover over the last week or so. So uh, there you go. I'll see you guys in the next movie. Take care.